What is up, Speakeasy? I'm live here doing the Ty Lopez show. We're talking on Bill Gates. Say hello, James. Pop in here. Hello, James. Pop in here. Hello. We're shooting this uh, new little experiment here. I like to experiment. If you want to make money in this world, make sure you experiment a lot. So we've got this 18-minute show today. We're talking about Bill Gates. We're talking about entrepreneur news, crypto, all the things that I think you need to know if you're an entrepreneur and you want to make a little money in the game. So this is a new format I'm testing out. And uh, James, if you want, you can pop your phone. Are you on Speakeasy? No. Shall I go on Speakeasy? Uh, we'll do it another time. Okay. We'll edit you in in another one. Okay. So let's go through this bullet point. I got my timer going. I'm going to add the timer. We've got 18 minutes. What do you need to know? The net worth news of the day. That's what I'm going to call this. Sponsored by net worth. Somebody says Bill Gates is not on the richest list, but he's on the Epstein list. Okay, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that this, I think there's just as many people who are thrilled that he's going to drop off the list because I don't think he's a very well liked person. Right? In my, in my, uh, <laughs> in my polls of billionaires, Bill Gates is by far the least popular billionaire in the world. So Bill Gates says he'll give 20 billion to the foundation and he's, that'll drop him off the richest list in the world. I mean, he'll still be on the Forbes list. We're also gonna talk about Ivana Trump, former President Trump's wife, uh, died of blunt impact injuries, sad news. I mean, whatever your politics is, it's, um, you know, it's the mother of children, so that's, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of conspiracy theories of somebody, what really happened. Let's do a quick speakeasy poll here. Like or dislike or neutral on Bill Gates? What's your opinion? Like, dislike, some people consider he's one of the lizard people, Illuminati, gonna ruin the, you know, are you, let me, let me invite you on here. Yeah. Comment for a second, I'm gonna put you on. Okay. Thumbs down. Is this like a likability test on Bill Gates? This is just like, yeah, it's like Bill Gates, your guy. I'm a, I'm a thumbs down. You're on a Bill thumbs Gates. downer. A th my mom, you can't even mention that. I don't know what Bill Gates did to my mom, but she did something. He did something that she can't stand him. But if you if you say that you're pro Bill Gates, you get so much hate from those who are anti yeah. Bill Gates. Yeah, Bill Gates is one of these dudes. I think it's the Epstein meets. When you become that rich, you should become a uh, PR genius. Like Pablo Escobar did well until he stopped building soccer stadiums in Colombia and he blew up a plane with little children on it. Yeah. When the masses love you, you can be Pablo Escobar and you stay out of jail. Yeah. When the masses don't love you, you could be Bill Gates giving away half your money to charity and everybody hates you. So. I think that's a, I think it's a common mistake I see. Even Donald Trump, I, I, like I'm not a Republican or Democrat, but if I was the advisor to Donald Trump, I think I could have got him to be president for two terms. You know what it is? What? Put together a syndicate of $100 million for, to fix the water in Flint, Michigan. That's bipartisan, both sides like it. He would have had to put a mill of his own money in other people would have stepped in. Wealthy donors would have put 99 mil more. Every time Democrats would have got mad at him, he goes, but I fixed the water in Flint, <laughs> Michigan and yeah. shut people up. You have to understand psychology. So why would then Bill Gates be doing this, do you think? I mean, he's saying, oh, I'm going to donate $20 billion. Is he doing it to buy likes? Is it like... No, because it doesn't work. You know, because Bill work? Gates does stuff that people don't like. Like he donates mm -hmm. $20 billion to uh, vaccines and half of America hates vaccines, or at least, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think that it's a matter of, it's not just giving money away, but like Pablo Escobar built soccer stadiums. Right. Motherfuckers in Colombia like soccer. So well, you need I had to a think dorm in, yeah. I had a doorman in Medellin when I lived there years ago, and he said to me in Spanish, Pablo Escobar was a great man. Was a great man. He was right? a great man. Yeah. And I was shocked because I'd just been watching all these yes. Pablo Escobar documentaries and movies where he's like the most evil man in history. Yeah. And literally the doorman for 20 minutes was arguing why he was such a great man. And one of those reasons was because yeah. he fixed Hospitals. the impoverished um, yeah. neighborhoods. 
you know, Dude, like why the, doesn't Bill Gates give a million bucks a day to a home, somebody on the streets? Everybody would love him. That's nothing. That's three hundred sixty-five million a year. He, his interest in one of his bank accounts is more than that. Right. You drop a bill. Now I know, like smart people, like Elon Musk and stuff, go well. You know, that's not actually going to help. Eh, it helps the damn person that gets the million bucks. So I, I always think that's a classic mistake. Um, someone said Bill Gates is a beta man. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, if you watch that. You ain't if a beta if you got 200 billion. Have work. you seen him dancing? He's not going to do that well at a club, for example. No. But I'm like, is he really a beta? Like, you really think you become the richest dude in the most competitive thing on earth, which is making money? Like, nothing's more competitive than making money. Not everybody wants to be LeBron James basketball player, or Ronaldo soccer player, but everybody wants money. I, 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 would, I would save whoever said that that Bill Gates is, you need a bigger vocabulary. Hmm. Bill Gates is not a beta male. So do you then rank alpha to beta based on your wealth, financial wealth? Well, I'm saying, if you look at science of how the human brain works and status hierarchies, I was just re-listening to the book Social by Matt Lieberman. Hmm. Men for the last 700,000 years of homo sapien existence have calculated alpha status much more around resource acquisition. Mm. So, I mean, not every dude, I mean, like, who's more alpha? A big MMA guy or a dude who has 100,000 $100, billion dollars? So would you compare Bill? I mean, so 100,000 million dollars. Who's more alpha, Bill Gates or Conor McGregor? That's what I'm saying. A lot of dudes would say Conor. But a Bill Gates can take Conor McGregor off the planet, much e more <laughs> likely. I mean, look. Then, then it depends on, does it depend on your environment, right? Because if Bill Gates gets into the ring with Conor McGregor. Yeah, but when you're truly alpha, you're the godfather. Mm. You, you ain't alpha if you're street fighting. <laughs> but like if you're going out into the wilderness, right, and you got the wolf, there's the, there's the alpha wolf, and it's like got the biggest presence, is the best killer can get the the most food yeah and then if some the skinny dude with a gun comes and shoots him okay so iq what? trumps neanderthals which we're all related to were much stronger than humans higher or were their cousins homo sapiens are cousins of you know neanderthal and most of us have two to three percent neanderthal if you got a friend that's ugly it's probably because he has that might echo Probably because probably he has a lot of Neanderthal. You might have, so you might have a 6% Neanderthal friend. Um, but Neanderthal is lost because humans had vocal cords so they could coordinate attacks. And they spoke better. So it's like three little he homo sapiens were like, yo, bro, you come around this side of this hill. Wait till the guy's sleeping. You hit him in the back of the head with a rock. Oh, so I, I, I think if you're scientific, not emotional, I think emotional dudes... 21 year old guys that are on Instagram and TikTok probably think the most alpha guy has the most muscles, but come on, man. Here's a question. Who's more alpha and who's more beta, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Donald or Joe Biden? Well, see, then, since they are peers in terms of power, presidential power, Donald Trump's probably richer, probably, and Donald Trump's a bigger physical dude, probably Donald Trump. But if you're a Biden lover, you can say, well, Biden knocked Trump out. So mathematically, who won? You know, so I'm just saying that argument go a lot of different directions. And what if, if Biden, he's the current president, surely he has more power oh, yeah. than someone who's not the president. For sure. But, but, but a former president has a lot of power. That's why Trump's probably not gonna go to jail. The American populace and justice system doesn't want the embarrassment of a former sitting head of the United States in prison. Never. So even Nixon, they're like, bro, you can resign. Yeah. So it's just the game. Most of you all are listening to numb nuts on people. Basically, I believe the opposite of whatever everybody else believes. So like Bill Gates is, Putin is more alpha than who? Than Bill Gates? Yes, because Putin controls an army. But Putin's certainly not more alpha than any president of the United States. The U.S. Army is a thing of wonder. I mean, the U.S. military, Russia does have nuclear potential, and it is dangerous because someone with just one stray nuke 
But I mean, the U.S. military would pulverize Russia if you take the if you take things out like hypersonic missiles and so on. They're not in the same universe. Russia's having a hard time with the Ukraine, you know. So, okay, Elon Musk hits back at Twitter's court threat in the most Elon Musk way possible. So Elon's joking with the Twitter board who says they're going to take him to Delaware court. Delaware is a probably the most common place you incorporate a business in the United States. It has well-established case law. I've got a lot of Delaware LLCs, but Delaware in general sides with the, with the target in this case, which is Twitter on failed mergers. So the question is, will Elon be on a hook for more than a billion dollars of penalties? I don't think he really cares, does he? The way that he's reacting. All rich, nobody, everybody cares. Sometimes you go, ah, oh, this guy, rich people, are, you know what happened? People have not been around rich people. Rich dudes are cheap as hell. I had a rich guy one time, rich. Maybe not a billionaire, but I'm talking about a dude making five to 10 million a month who was probably worth six to $800 million, real money too. Not like, like it's a real estate mogul. And he, he was an older guy and his wife had died sadly from cancer. And so he was single. And so he was like, hey Ty, he came to one of my house parties in Hollywood. He used to come to my Hollywood house party. Mm. He's like, hey, Ty, can you set me up? Like, he wasn't even wanting a date. He was just like, can you set me up? He, he, he said, Ty, I want to go to the disco. And I told him, bro, discos haven't happened for, I'm like, don't say disco. He was an older guy, but he's like, you know, can you set me up with just a social group where people are going out and I can maybe meet somebody? So I set him out at this dinner. I couldn't even go. It was at the Mondrian Hotel. You know, the Mondrian. Mm. And there was like 50 people, or maybe not 50, 20 people went, like 18 women, 17 women, and like three guys. I didn't even go because I was busy. At the end of it, this is a rich dude, okay? He got stuck with the bill, mm. which if you're worth, if you're making six mil net a month and you got at least 600 million net liquid net worth, he called me so mad he wanted me to pay half of it he's like they stuck me with a two thousand dollar bill i won't say his name but i was like you want me to pay i wasn't even there if you're such a big deal to you why didn't you say to the other people you all got to chip in he's like well they assumed i'm the richest guy i was like were you the richest guy there yeah was anybody even when one thousandth of your net worth I'm going, did you get what you want? Which is to be out in a social life in Hollywood? Yes, 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 yes. I'm still pissed about 2000. It took about <laughs> two months. So my point is, I don't think rich, you get rich in general because you're thrifty with your dollars. I, I, Elon Musk is a psychological master. Everything that people think about Elon Musk, I think the opposite. And I'm the guy, actually with you, remember the first time you met Elon Musk with me at the HBO Awards? Selena Gomez, all those people. I think the first time was at the Game of Thrones premiere party. And was then, that before HBO? I think it was, yeah. Well, the Game of Thrones HBO okay. party was at the Chinese Man Theater on, uh, and then the Hotel no. Roosevelt. Yeah. No, it and was then afterwards, Beverly Hills. No, no, that was the, that was the uh, Golden Globes. Oh, the Golden Globes. At the Globe. Hilton. Okay. So we met him twice. Yes. First time was at the HBO Game of Thrones yes. premiere for season five. You're the, the one who came with me on that. Yes. See, I'd met him two times before then. Okay. But you, you didn't know him well enough to be able to go up and say, no. hey, remember me. But no, I, I don't know him that well, but I know I've talked to him for probably a total of one hour in my life. Yeah. We were at the Golden Globe. James is the party. master networker. If any of you all want to go meet Elon Musk, bring James. He is great. People think I'm good at networking. This guy's better. We were at the Hilton at the after party of the Golden Globes. Yes. And you, you said to me beforehand, James, if you, meet, if you see Elon Musk or Warren Buffett or anyone here, let me know. Yeah. So I saw Elon Musk and I yes. came and, gra came, came and was grabbed you. Was he with you. Amber Heard then? No, no, he wasn't. He was with someone, but it wasn't Amber Heard. Okay. And I pulled you over and then I went up to Elon Musk and I went, Elon, Ty Lopez, he's got a yes. great question for you. Yeah, to ask him about his favorite book. Yeah, yeah. He's got a great question for you about, about your favorite book. And then you just sort of slid in and went, yeah, so what's your favorite book? And remember book? his girlfriend pulled him away? Yeah. And then he pulled away from her and came back and is like, I want to answer that question. He likes books. Yeah. He goes, game of, he said, uh, Lord of the Rings. And I said, why? He said, because it, 
tells you you should do something even if you might fail. Mm. Which I thought is a great life lesson. Look at his life, even if you might fail. So, yeah. Musk's child is switching gender. Musk is a genius, somebody said. Do you see that Elon Musk's dad yes. has fathered two children now with his stepdaughter? Right, that he raised from age four. Yeah. And she's 35. And then, of course, you've got these allegations that came out overnight that Ricky Martin has been in a relationship with his nephew, right? There's that That's accusation. You Ricky seen Martin's this yet? in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I know, but Ricky Martin. So Ricky Martin's been accused by his nephew of having a romantic relationship and harassing his nephew for the last seven months. The male nephew. Yeah, the male nephew. So there's like there's more incest going on than a Game of Thrones storyline. It's crazy at the moment. Sorry, alleged incest. I, I try to not, I'm focused on the business side. It's like whatever. This is what's going on. Hey, in the I live, right that's now. why I told you all you all think I live, I lived it behind the scenes. Celebrity wealth. It ain't what you think it is. Most of it's weirdos. Well, it's just, uh, a, it's just human beings being human beings. No, but extra weird, extra weird mental illness. But do you think you get extra weird mental yes. illness from extra wealth? No, I think extra, oftentimes people pursue crazy amounts of wealth, had the mental illness first. Mm. What's your mental illness? <laughs> I'm not as wealthy as Elon Musk, so maybe not as I. Crypto Winter Watch, Forbes Magazine, all the big layoffs, record withdrawals and bankruptcies sparked by the $2 trillion crypto crash. Now here's the thing about crypto. First off, in a sense, it's not a crash like Forbes tries to make it out. Look, if you had $1 in Terra Luna or anything, and it went to $100,000 and you didn't cash in and it goes back to $1, you actually didn't lose any money. Although you, you can do a news article headline for clickbait that says, you know, the things plummeted. So crypto's gone up a lot. I got into crypto when I started posting on my social, August, 2017. It was at 4,500 Bitcoin, 197 ETH. That's when I got in and bought a large, my main majority of trunks. So for me, the, there is no crypto crash. But obviously, if you bought high, sold low, uh, you know, you've been a little bit screwed over here. But there's lay, been layoffs at Coinbase. Binance has been hiring. Crypt, uh, yesterday, Coinbase said they're turning off their affiliate program, merging Coinbase Pro, some people think that's the signs that Coinbase is cracking. Somebody said, what are the odds all these stadiums that have like crypto.com and, mm. and FTX? They're, what happens if one of those goes bankrupt and you have the damn thing? Yeah. Well, the, Matt Damon, the actor, he did yes. a big uh, commercial on, yes. during the Super Bowl. He got a for, lot of flack for that. For Coinbase or crypto? Coinbase. Or crypto.com, I think, maybe. I think it was, was crypto.com. It? Maybe it was crypto. Yeah. One, Coinbase had that commercial. Yeah, Coinbase broke their, their website. But Tom Brady is now also doing yeah. commercials for, which one is it? It's not buying an FTX. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the probably. Trade, the trading one, yeah. You pay somebody enough money, they're going to do a damn commercial. But Everybody things, says they're ethical. If I flash, if I flash a $20 million commercial uh, check in front of you, Matt Damon or anybody's going to do all the people, celebrities complaining about Matt Damon. They would have the same thing. Come on. These same people that complain about Matt Damon do McDonald's commercials. Oh, yeah. For sure. McDonald's has killed more people than crypto. So Shit. what happens if those companies that they're promoting so actively and so recently crash? Does that reflect poorly on Matt Damon and Tom Brady? That's what I said. No. It does Negligible? because the media will make up bullshit. It's not mm. logical. I mean, mm. people did TWA Airlines commercials. Those are gone. That's true. People did Sears commercials for 100 years. That thing's been bankrupt multiple times. Mm. This is America. People did Toys R Us commercials. That's been bankrupt. Mm. I mean, people are just so... We live in... Uh, the timing of it seems a little bit harsher though, right? Like yeah. if Tom Brady is actively on commercials and yes. advertising a platform and then the very next day it crashes and goes out of business. That timing doesn't look right. so crash hot, does it? Oh, sh for sure. Okay, we're running out of time here. Oh, I think we're already past our time. Let's go to one more for today's newscast. Inflation rose 9.1 in June. Okay, let, let's talk here. I'm a contrarian. The mass media is run by people 
that couldn't make a million dollars, only way mass, most people in mass media can make one million is if they inherited two million. And after five years, they lose half of it and they <laughs> how to make a million. These people don't really know what they're talking about. Here's the thing, inflation, 9.1. You gotta look at product specific inflation. There's things that are cheaper. So for example, for the last 10 years, 20 years, the United States, as a portion of your salary, very little has been needed for housing. Whereas Europe, housing has been very expensive relative to payroll. So let's say you get a $3,000 a month paycheck. Europe, you might be paying 1,700 of it for an apartment. Whereas in America, if you're making three grand, you're living in Missouri, you might be able to find an $800 a month place. So you have to look at inflation on a product by product, lifestyle by lifestyle situation. You just got tipped 100 silver. Who did? Tip you, you just earned it. Oh, did he? Oh, James, you can get rich off here. Thank you. I get a cut of your silver, speakeasy silver. Thank you, Marshawn Russell. Um, but here's the deal. It may not affect your life. This is just, so like air. 9% of inflation? Yeah, because if you don't, tr you know what's really gone up, for example, is flights. But if you're poor, just don't fly. You know how much a, a one lettuce is selling for in an Australian supermarket? Yeah, Australia is, has problems because you don't have water. He's Australian. Yeah, yeah. I saw one lettuce advertised in my supermarket for $11.99. Yeah. One you, lettuce. But Japan, I went to Japan years ago. It was a $12 apple. $12 for like one $12 apple? $12 or 9, 10, 11, 12 bucks. I mean, y'all got to take this with a grain of salt. Yes, inflation is rising. Yes, and where it's really going to hurt is older people who don't have time to recover. People on a fixed income, people who have a set, you know, $1,000 check from Social Security. You know what I'm saying? And Marshawn says, Ty asked for a cut of his silver. <laughs> he's on my show. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, he's not being paid, so he can get paid in silver here. Um, what do you mean? You said that you were going to pay me for this. I did, 100 silver. <laughs> I think that's like 10 cents. Um, I, I think we'll, look, think like a Jedi when it comes to money, meaning when everybody else is freaking out about it, it's always, there's always an angle, attack vector that it's not going to affect you. People get affected a lot are people who are older, people who don't know what they're doing, people who are never trained with money people who are not entrepreneurial a lot. So I feel bad for those people, but the only solution to that is you got to do the opposite. You got to get entrepreneur. You know, you can't make yourself younger if you're 70, but you can 70 year olds launch businesses. Kentucky fried chicken was launched by Colonel Sanders in his late sixties. People create wealth at all times. So somebody's asking about your Swanee sleep glasses. Yeah. The answer is yes, we do do prescription. I glasses. have prescription Swannies. Yeah. Aren't them, but yeah. Yeah, the thing with that inflation, Ty, as well, the, the fact that it's gone up 9.1% in June makes me think, well, how can I make that back? Or how can I increase my revenue or my income by at least that? So this has actually got me thinking bigger and actually expanding my possibilities. Yeah. Um, whereas I know a lot of people, and especially what you read in the news, it's like, oh my God, this is awful. How terrible is it? Yes. Everything's going down by 9.1. For me, it's like, okay, inflation's going up 9.1. I'd best find something that's gonna make me at least 20%. Yeah, yeah. It means asset values will go up. So the, mm -hmm. the key takeaway to an inflationary environment is more important than owning any form of currency is to own actual assets that produce real value. So this is a good time to own a multifamily piece of real estate that you bought 10 years ago. This is a good time to own a farm that you bought 10 years ago. This is a good time to buy a stock that represents equity in something like this. This is a good time to own a means of production. So this is a good time. Now, somebody like Elon Musk's Tesla, you got to be careful because the parts and the components have gone up, right? So he has to pass that on to the consumer, <clears throat> which is problematic. So I think your best thing to own in inflationary environments are things that really produce that are like a rudimentary level, like farmland in Illinois, the most, arguably the most fertile farmland in the world is central Illinois. It's gone up for 10 to $20,000. So that inflation, um, in, if you own the asset, it's up 100% inflation year over year. It's because you own the means of production. So you gotta understand kind of some macroeconomic 
uh, principles, and then you're going to be okay. For those people who don't own assets, you're going to get screwed over. What do you think about BMW charging 18 a month for heated seats? Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like an experiment. Elon Musk, another piece of news. I like that one. Elon Musk said, don't try to be a leader for the sake of being a leader. Mm -hmm. The way I would say it, I think that's too broad. I would say not everybody's an entrepreneur who needs to start something from scratch. Most people are intrapreneurs and you can be inside someone else's entrepreneurial venture. And that's just the, how the math is going to be. So Steve Ballmer, I know he's worth about 90 billion or whatever. And he wasn't, he didn't start Microsoft. He came later. And so it's okay, but I totally agree. Too many people think they can be the leader and the visionary and we, the world needs also people that work inside of innovative industries. What else we got here? I'm not seeing most trending topics, UFC, Long Island, a lot of sports, you know, it's insane. The most trending things in the world are things that are diversionary, <laughs> which is sports hmm. and music. You look at Google Trends, you look at Twitter, the real hardcore trending, not the for you trending. It's all things that entertain. Right. Yeah. Coronavirus, Coronavirus in China. China economy shrinks on zero COVID. Yeah, China's, a, China's a, like Winston Churchill said, a riddle inside of a quandary, inside of an enigma kind of thing. It's hard to know what's actually happening in China. It's, it's central control. It's highly capitalistic with this, with a communistic central control. What's more complicated than that? That's like dating a woman who's <laughs> bipolar with schizophrenic breaks and a black belt <laughs> in jujitsu. That's a complicated woman to date. <laughs> you better be careful. That's China. Let me go back to the sport thing for a second. I got a question for you. So I follow a football, a, a English soccer club. And there's some, a couple of fans who I follow that talk about the team and they are so, so passionate about the team. They have these euphoric highs and these really awful lows depending yep. on the team's performance, right? They don't seem overly wealthy, but they seem incredibly happy following this team, right? So I've looked at them and I think maybe those guys are really experiencing life more than no. I am because they're so emotionally invested in this thing and they have these highs and they have these lows right. and they're experiencing all the emotions versus someone else who's maybe not invested in it and they're just right. going along in life. So what, like, you mean, so is there positive externalities of being fa sports fanatic? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it a yes, waste, complete the, waste of time when no. you compare it to... No, no, because it's in our evolutionary past. It's in our DNA to like sports. Sports serve a purpose. They've had last 700,000 years of us human homo sapiens. There's been some form of sports. There's a great book, James Michener, which is more historical fiction, but fairly accurate a book called Caribbean. It's on, I mean, every culture had some form of game and what they did was serve to train warriors mm -hmm. and they, tr they served to differentiate mating patterns. So the boy, and the girl who were the most coordinated would match up with each other and get married. So it was a display of physical prowess, which is linked to health, fertility, and evolutionary positive adaptions. So everything in this world, there's this thing called the optimal frontier kind of concept, okay? So just imagine this, if your life has no sports in it, on a happiness, here's this happiness, you might be low in happiness, okay? Then as you go up on this, uh, the efficient frontier, okay? It was the technical term for it. And then you have the optimal stopping point on it. So as you get more involved in sports, you might get happier at some point, or your life might get better. At some point, when you spend too much of your day, week, and month on sports, you cross over a line or, or a curve on the hill and you start to become a moron who's neglecting other important things. And so almost everything in life you're trying to find, it's funny how when I speak, I feel like I'm the only person in the world speaking on this. It's very sad because this is the actual truth. I will bet any amount of money that this general principle that I'm telling you right now is the most important principle you've ever heard on this earth on to how you should modulate your behavior as a human. So for example, if you have no money in your life, 
okay, on this efficient frontier, this curve, you're experiencing a lot of pain. So you push to make more money and your life gets better. Daniel Kahneman, Nobel Prize winner, proved this. As you go up to 60, 70, 80, 100,000, your life gets happier. At some point, it starts to slow down. And in fact, at some point, more money, more problems to where your happiness actually, so you should stop right there. And it's different for different people based on capacity, IQ, environment, individualistic goals. But in general, this curve is there. And so if you wanna be the richest person in the world, you're probably making a big mistake. If you wanna be the most famous man in the world or woman, you're probably making a mistake. But if you want no fame, you're also making a mistake, mistake because status is a fungible human um, reward that's been exchangeable for thousands of years and almost a million years. So meaning a person of no fame, AKA status, experiences a worse reproductive, worse resource acquisition, lower quality friends, more low quality assets in their life. So everything in life is balance. Yes, ESS, 67 steps max. Evolutionary stable strategy. That's slightly different, but you're on the right track. Evolutionary stable strategy is much more around how things like regress. Like if I'm too aggressive to all my friends, then eventually they get pissed at me and stop being my friends. But if I'm not aggressive enough, so the ESS is more like the actual mechanics that happens where we bounce to stability. I'm too mean, then they get mad at me back and then I become more humble because I don't want my friends screaming at me. And then, so it's more like the, you know, game theory modulation. What I was talking about, the efficient frontier is more like what you should set your life goals. So I think a man who has no interest in sports probably misses out some camaraderie. Just the fact that other men like it, you're missing out on some camaraderie, which men need and women need to form alliances. Wealth comes from great alliances. Mm. Elon Musk had the PayPal mafia, the 12 or 13 Peter Thiel's, Ken Howries, these people who helped him form wealth. Mm. So alliances are important. So a man who doesn't care at all. Now, video games for me is something that has fallen off the efficient frontier. But maybe I should play video games a little more because I could form alliances a little bit with, but not many people who are, have the same goals as me play video games anymore. So video games becomes a lower importance. It was important when I was 12. If I played no video games at 12, I would have lost alliances with a lot of 12 year old friends, you know, who mm -hmm. wanna do that. So these are complicated conversations that people oversimplify. And I often don't talk about these because they bore most people because most people are dull minded. But for those of you who aren't dull minded, these become more interesting conversations. I remember the day that I decided to focus on being an investor was when I was in Los Angeles living in a West Hollywood apartment. And I, my team is the Denver Broncos. And I spent this Sunday watching the Denver Broncos and the game started at 1 p.m. Pacific. It was a beautiful, like fall day in California. And I stayed inside this little apartment, which was dark, and I watched this game and the Broncos lost on a final uh, field goal to the other team. And I was so pissed and I was so angry. And I walked outside and I thought, I just invested four hours of my <laughs> Californian Sunday watching a bunch of guys I don't know throw around right. a pigskin. I'm like, that's it. And I stopped. And then from there on in, I started reading about Ray Dalio and Carl right. Icahn. And I read the Tony Robbins book on um, money. What yes. was it? I think it's just called Money or something. And I started spending my time in that. And I just did a blanket ban on watching any Denver Broncos right. games. Up That's an that. ESS. That's an evolutionary stable strategy. You went too far mm. into sports. But be careful you don't bounce too far the other way. To mm. What you're best off doing, if you're a logical entrepreneur, is you bring key potential allies to sports events, which is oh, what I did. huge. And I brought Floyd Mayweather. I texted Floyd Mayweather before I knew him through a friend. I said, yo, I got floor seats at the Lakers. You want to come with me? And he's like, sure. And now I know Floyd Mayweather. So mm. that's, that's a why. And I like sports. So that, you got to kill two birds with one stone, ladies and gentlemen. And for men in particular, like two guys catching up are not going to say, hey, let's go meet up for coffee and sit opposite one another. Hey, Floyd, you want to meet <laughs> me at Starbucks? You don't know me. Let's go on a coffee date. Yeah, you're right. But for men, if you're watching something. Is that a work, Adrian? 
Hell no. If you're both watching a sporting event, then that's when yes. men can connect yeah. with each other, right? They're watching a battle take yeah. place. Then they can have that conversation. Yes. Like even when you go to the Lakers with Floyd May Mayweather, you're sitting side by side, not opposite. Yeah. Whereas women will very, ha very happily go and catch up with a friend and sit yes. directly opposite them and catch up. And whereas men have to actually be doing, doing yeah. something while they catch up. In general, primate males don't face each other because it means aggression. Mm. If you, if you meet a dude and stare him straight in the eyes, but if you watch women talk, yeah, they stare deep into each other's eyes, mm -hmm. even if they don't know each other. That's very... And they like it when men stare deep into their eyes as well, right? <laughs> humans are not that... Humans just think they're interesting. This is such classic biology, zoology stuff. It's funny. Humans are so narcissistic that like men and women think they're just like this unique thing. That's why one of my mentors is Robert Trivers, who's the founder of evolutionary biology department at Harvard. He don't give a shit about human. Everything you talk about humans, he's talking about in the context of mammals. Mm -hmm. So he, he, if he, he's a cool guy to talk to because people are like, yo, what should this Elon Musk? He's like, well, the mammal should do this. The male mammal should do this. He's so he's playing high level chess when the whole world is playing checkers in terms of how they understand the world Literally, the whole world ain't even playing checkers in understanding the world at best the world is playing yahtzee or not nah, what's even sorry you know the or, or what's the game with no skill uno bogle bogle uno snakes and ladders snakes monopoly is a hard like mm. i like to listen to people who are playing not just chess not just three-dimensional chess but like they're playing three-dimensional chess against seven grandmasters while not facing the board. So a lot of these things that are like fascinating people I get bored with, not that I'm a grandmaster, but as I said, sports, the way to think about it is in a non-human way. Are there examples where non-human mammals or other species play, do sports? Absolutely. Your dogs, which are mammals, but not homo sapiens. Little puppies play with each other, bite each other. Lions do this, whales do this, fish do this, insects. <coughs> Female flies do a process called bumping where they fly. Female flies fly down re on purpose where there's a male and hit him real hard. And if he doesn't move, then they mate with him because it means he's powerful and strong. The human beings do that as well, right? Exactly. Women do yeah. the same shit. Women this is something men. guys don't know. When you go to a nightclub, if you go with a guy who really knows what he's doing, when a woman talks shit to him, instead of withering away, he laughs. Yeah. And sometimes a woman suddenly likes you that didn't like you. Because that's a class, that's not even a mammalian, that's not even a mammalian trait. That's a fly trait. Women... I think it was David Dater. are right? about as high level as flies <laughs> in a nightclub. <laughs> no greater than flies. What's that David Data book, The Way of the Superior the Man? The, I never could get into that book. You like that book? But he said, I don't, I don't, I don't remember liking yeah. it or disliking it. I just found it very interesting. But he said that women feel particularly attracted to the man when they test the man. The man doesn't yes. flunk the test. Yes. So he's saying that they will be most attracted when they're, yeah. and in fact, his advice to men was, you want them to be testing you and pushing you and prodding you all the time. And you always want to be passing the test. Yeah, but that's bad science, but he's on the right track. Natasha said, did you just compare women to flies? No, I compared homo sapiens to flies, which would include women and men. Jeez, you got to be really careful what you say. Well, maybe this wasn't, an, maybe it wasn't an accusatory she's, no, comment. She's joking, but I did accuse women of flies, but I also men of flies. So I'm an equal opportunity flyest. I think we should just cancel Ty Lopez. Just go cancel, flyest. cancel, cancel, cancel. I feel like that's, people have already been trying to do that to me. If that, <laughs> if, if me saying the truth about biology and flies and being like males and females, that's just how the game is, ladies who, and gentlemen. Who has been canceled from just sharing the plain truth? Scientists. Yeah, scientists. Well, is there a one scientist or a, in particular, someone noteworthy who's been cancelled? Who's like the most famous person who was cancelled but really was actually speaking the truth? I'm just trying to think. Who's been cancelled recently, last couple of years? Adrian, can you think well, of anyone? Elon had a cancel thing. 
I don't know if it was. You can't really. You can't really. <laughs> Can't really defend Harvey Weinstein, for example. He no, no, that guy, that guy. Yeah, yeah, that's a different level. That's, yeah. Lots of people get. I mean, the big. I'm trying to think. The most famous person canceled that's now accepted back. You have the comedians. A lot of them are back. I mean, you had a Dave Chappelle got canceled by some people. No He's audio, back. by the way. There's comments coming saying the the sound went out, Adrian. Huh. And I would just speak to your phone. Interesting. That's a speakeasy thing. Well, that's a good. We're gonna we're gonna end the show. Okay, let's end the show. Do do do.